Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be, and welcome to my post on the science of diamonds. It's called Diamonds Are Forever. The internet says that diamonds were formed in the Earth's mantle between one and three billion years ago, and volcanic eruptions brought the diamonds up to the surface. In this scenario, diamonds come from the dark, hot, and mysterious heart of the Earth. How romantic. Yet, only 30 years ago, conventional wisdom about diamonds was very different. I was told that diamonds form in a coal seam, where coal is compressed over long periods at extremely high heat and pressure. In this scenario, diamonds come from ancient organic matter, composted dinosaur flesh. That's not quite as romantic. Today, we know that in a laboratory, diamonds can be manufactured from peanut butter in some cases. They take peanut butter and with intense shocks of electricity, the heat and pressure gets concentrated in little holes in the peanut butter, creating tiny diamonds. So why isn't this one of the ways in which diamonds are formed in nature? We know that diamonds form after some meteor impacts, so why not just lightning strikes? It is certainly possible that when lightning strikes smooth, peanut butter or crap, <laughs> high pressure and heat can lead to the formation of diamonds and crystals. In fact, these researchers, well, a set of researchers that I linked to in my post, were quite blunt in their request for more realism about the mechanisms which form a whole class of rocks, for example, Hypatia stone, Carbondo diamonds. And they write, since ultra high pressure minerals have been discovered in Ophiolites from Tibet and the polar Urals, it is speculated that the mantle sections of Ophiolites may originate deep within the mantle. The ultra-high pressure minerals are frequently found together with ultra-reduced silicides, carbides, and nitrides. Consequently, it is argued that the deep mantle, or at least domains within it, must be highly reduced. So reduced that practically all transition elements at depth are present in the metallic state. We find it problematic to rewrite the history of ophiolite complexes based on these observations and suggest we should search for alternative and more realistic modes of origin. Electric discharge experiments at greater than 6,000 Kelvin show that ultra-high pressure and highly reduced phase assemblages may precipitate from plasmas. We argue that the mineral assemblages may originate by lightning strikes. As such, they may not record the origin and emplacement history of the mantle lithologies within which they occur. So if you translate this technical jargon into plain English, they're basically saying the idea that a lot of a whole class of rocks come from mysterious dark processes within the mantle, that it's seems unlikely to them because there are other mechanisms which can create these rocks in much more conventional, less mysterious ways. So when I summarize this, the pertinent questions become the, which of these three processes is responsible for most of the diamonds we find today? Are they formed in deep, in the deep, mysterious heart of the planet? Are they formed in a hot, high-pressure coal seam? Or are they formed through lightning 
striking poop. If I were a diamond seller like De Beers, I know which one I would choose because nobody would buy a diamond if it came from a piece of crap struck by lightning. But if it came from a hot, dark, mysterious process in the heart of the earth, well, that is a marketer's dream. I love the metaphor of lightning striking shit and turning it into diamonds. In terms of popular culture, that would explain things like the popularity of Fifty Shades of Grey and the Gravitational Wave Observatory. To me, these things seem like crystallized crap in the collective consciousness. If only lightning would strike my novels and turn them into diamonds. <laughs> Maybe they're not crappy enough for that to happen. Some reviewers thought they were pretty good, and I hope that some of you take a look at them and give them a chance. Um, if you prefer shorter things, then please keep reading my blog posts and watching my videos. Until next time, thank you for watching.